Greetings everyone, I am Ed White. And this is a quick overview of how to get started working with my storyboard and animatic add-on for Blender. It will work with Blender's 2.83 and later. It is designed to work in the front view, like in 2D animation mode. If you start in 3D mode, you will need to change the view to the front view by pressing 1 on the numeric keyboard. You can leave the default cube, and in fact, the first panel will actually be about that size. So if you pan your screen to make this cube in the upper left, that will be the start of your panels. To install it, go to the Edit menu, Preferences, Add-ons, and click the Install tab. Locate your zip file, select it, Install Add-on. Activate it with a check, and close the window. So it will appear in the Tools panel, which you can open by selecting View Sidebar or by pressing N on the keyboard. To get started, you'll need to click the Create Storyboard button first. When you do that, a new panel will pop open showing horizontal vertical panels with the total, the time frame that you want each panel to jump in time, this is in frames, and it actually will delete the default cube for you after, so you don't have to worry about that. And you can actually pick a name for each of the different shots. If you change the size or type in some number, it'll give you a preview. And if you change the size, you won't see a preview now, but it will happen after you click the OK button. So what happens is, Panels are created with corresponding cameras for each panel. In addition, the cameras are set to markers, which are actually bound to markers, at the bottom in the timeline. And as you move the time cursor, each camera will switch to the next shot over time. And if you play, you'll see each camera changing. If I change to a user perspective view, we can zoom out and we can see each of the panels and each of the orthographic cameras. The cameras are orthographic so that each pixel maps to each pixel on the camera. They're not a perspective camera, so you won't actually see any of the panels if the camera moves in or out of the y-axis. In the interface, you can select different cameras by pressing a button on this interface and it will activate that camera as a view. To jump into that camera's view, you can toggle the camera view with this button here or the shortcut zero on the numeric keypad. When you're in this view, you can see that as I change images, the camera is changing to view that whole view. And you can zoom in and out as much as you want. One of the best views is to go into the view, viewpoint, front view, like it was at the beginning. And you can zoom in and out of this. In addition to seeing each camera in its view, there is also a storyboard camera that you can use to render out the panels. The active camera is marked by a highlighted icon in this interface. It's also marked in the camera navigation section here. It shows which camera you're using. And also in the outliner, you can see which is the actual camera. Now you can pick cameras with this green icon here to change to different views. To start drawing with the grease pencil, you can actually click the draw button at the top. That will actually create a grease pencil object and it will create layers depending on your preferences 
and it will default to starting with either a character rough or a background rough. So if you want to work on backgrounds first, you could do that, or if you want to start with characters, you could do that. It will also create materials, depending on what you have set in your preferences. And with the fast draw, as you change shots, it will keep creating objects for each panel. So when you are in draw mode, it'll show it here and you can pick your tool up in this window here. I'll change to a pen so I can mark this like frame one. If I go to the next panel, I now have a new grease pencil object using the same layer. I'll mark a two here so that when I go back to the previous shot, you can see now I'm on frame one or shot one and camera has changed and the object has changed automatically. So if I go to next, you can see we're using the next grease pencil object for that. The reason for that is you can move this object around. So if I go to select mode, which is the same as object mode, you could actually press the G key and move this object and go back to your previous shot and you can see you haven't moved that. So each shot has an independent object. If you jump out of camera view, you can see our objects here. So you can turn off these cameras with this here and you get a much cleaner view. There are some quick navigation tools. If you select the select button, go back out into your overview. I'll pick shot six here and do a jump to shot. And now we're working on shot six. So I'll zoom in here, click draw. I'll mark this with a six. And if I select next, since we only have six panels with fast draw, next we'll create a new panel and you'll be in draw mode. So I'll mark this, we'll jump out and we'll see we now have a new panel. Use the hand or do shift and middle mouse button change your view and you can see you have a new shot added here. So working in the top part of the interface you will normally be working on frame one and this is so you can draw each of your grease pencil objects and be able to render them with a storyboard camera. As you have your panels created then you can come into the animatic section and then adjust timing of your shots. That's why you have a little time icon here. And with this, you can actually use the navigation here, but this will be using time. So as I select next in this panel, we'll move the time cursor to shot two. And if I activate this, we'll see that shot two is active. Selecting next, we'll do the same. The animatic part of the interface also has a section for working with markers. It will show your currently selected time and you can click this button or any of these buttons to jump to that point in time. So if I want to jump to shot six here on the time line, I can press six like this. And now if I pick markers to the right of that, it will be adjusting anything after that. I can also select cursors with this little checkbox here, which is a little bit easier than trying to select them in the interface. In fact, you can actually drag to select or drag to deselect. There is also a lock button that will lock the markers so that you cannot select them either in the marker interface or in the actual shot interface. The shot interface will let you to jump around. So the lock button will lock or unlock selection. You can also filter the markers to be only cameras or regular markers. So if I actually were to come down here and make a new marker by pressing M on the keyboard or in the marker menu, select add marker right here. And with that marker, you'll see that I have only cameras or markers will show that I have one on frame 110. And if I pick all, I can see the cameras and the markers. 
this is a great way to say that this shot I want to end here so then I can also pick shot 7 and then swap those two markers so now shot 7 is actually timed where the way I want and this marker I could delete or leave it there or filter it out that's it for this quick overview I hope you watched one of my next videos thanks to my wonderful patrons and anyone who's made a donation on Gumroad if you've not downloaded the add-on the link is in the description cheers <laughs>